Welcome to SpaceX Starship. So if you're not in the loop, SpaceX has finally finished a prototype of this uh, Starship rocket and it looks so retro it looks so uh, back roger not back rogers uh, what am i thinking of flash gordon esque type of starship so yes i can't wait to see them fly this and test this especially since they've been developing it for quite a while but now that they've got a billionaire who's got his trip booked to go around the moon i think it's time that they do start the testing they apparently they've got the raptor engines developed or at least develop to a stage where they can actually use them. I'm not entirely sure about the Raptor engines. I haven't read into them too much. Other than that they've been in development for quite a while. And they've gone quite far with them. So hopefully they're far enough that they'll be able to test this. Apparently the ones that they fitted on the test Starship are sort of like an earlier version of them. So I'm not sure at what uh, quality or whether they'll work properly. Or perhaps they're just there for fitting. I'm not entirely sure. But in any case, they are going to be testing it. So look out for that. Talking about testing, let's test out their flight plan for going to the man and back. Okay, so they've got a billionaire and he wants a trip around the moon and back. So like a return trajectory, a free return trajectory is the best way to describe it. I'll show you in this video when we get to it. So this challenge requires several things. Other, other than the spacecraft Starship being able to get into orbit and return safely to the Earth, I believe they are planning on landing that rocket using the rocket engines. That'll be interesting to see because it'll be coming at hyper velocities. As returning from the moon is, well, it's a higher drop, so you're gonna be coming at a faster speed. Anyway, here on the video, we're gonna be separating the launch stage, the first stage, and now we have to return this, turn it around, boost back, and head for the launch area. So to assist me with landing this first stage, what I've got is trajectories mod, and luckily it has a feature which I don't really use that much, but basically you can put a landing plot on the map, on, on the map, on the screen, other than the, just the map. This will be handy for pinpoint landings, especially if we want to make a base in KSP. But anyway, well, the reasons why we're using it is to try to land on the make sure that we land on the land. And it appears that we are veering off course towards the ocean, probably because it's I had the air brakes open and I yeah. I should have tried to target the other side of the KSC. At least then we'll have a lot of land to land on. So luckily though we do have a lot of Delta V in this. I uh, trying to use the right amount of Delta V is quite hard because uh, you have to return, you have to cancel out all your velocity, return to the landing site, the uh, launch site. This is my second attempt. I didn't have enough fuel the first time around to land, so obviously it was ditched in the ocean. But let's see if we can land properly this time. And bear in mind I haven't got landing legs on this. Hey presto, it worked, yes, I am so awesome. Now let's see SpaceX land one of these manually. <laughs> but to be honest, I almost used MechJeb to do that landing and I was thinking of doing that with the Falcon Heavy, tried to get two rockets and get them to target the space center and land. But I find trying to do that with two rocket boosters and try to target the space center as well as uh, so that they both land at the same time. That's what I was trying to do, what the SpaceX done. And it wouldn't work, so <laughs> I gave that up, the idea up. I suppose I could use Kerbal Operating System, but I'd have to learn how to use that first. And nah, my heart wasn't set on that. I'll leave that up to Marcus House. Anyway, we had got plenty of Delta V for this to get this into orbit and on the way to the man. So let's talk a bit about what uh, Elon Musk is planning for us because he's named this starship. Starship means a spaceship which travels between stars. Uh, interplanetary is what we would call a spacecraft which will travel between the planets, which I think would be an apt description of what he's planning with this. But what is he planning with this? Well, one, he's planning on go to the moon and back. He wants to make a moon base. He, everyone knows that he wants to send this to Mars. He wants this also to send up satellites, you know, in big bulks perhaps, or 
uh, reply, resupply the space station. Probably not resupply, but you can send people up there for a stay and... I don't know. Some, have a holiday hotel up there or something. I don't know. It's The possibilities are endless once he's built this and he makes this as cheap as possible. And that's why he's doing this. This is going to be a lot cheaper per person because of the amount of payload. This thing can launch 100 tons into low Earth orbit. Uh, so if you reduce the amount of uh, everything you've got in there, then you can go further. Or, like with the Mars mission, send another booster up there to connect to the spaceship, refuel it, and then send that on the way to Mars. Basically, this thing can go anywhere. So once you've sent it to one place, you can refuel it. If you have a space station, a base, or somewhere landing which can extract water, ice water, or anything, make liquid oxygen, liquid uh, hydrogen, well, then this, there's no limit to the solar system that this can go to. That being said, I think he's trying to overreach with Mars. That's, this is my only opinion, and that is because we haven't got the technology for survival. But I think his other plans, like a moon base, that's possible, hard, but possible. And, oh yes, I know I forgot, he's also planning on sending this to Earth. Yeah, yes, you heard me right, Earth. Uh, this is sort of also part of his idea that you can go somewhere within 25 minutes, half an hour, almost anywhere on the planet. Basically, you boost up into a suborbital trajectory up into space where the air friction is non-existent, and then you return safely, hopefully, and land at the spaceport. Oh yes, and before people pointed out, yes, those thermal readings are at the high and they should be exploding, but I'm using cheats. And that's because this thing will explode every time you deorbit it. Oh, there's one case, the nose cone exploded, and I was able to angle it so that, you know, the heat was symmetrical over the entire craft, which is really hard to do, by the way, with this thing. It's very uncontrollable. I don't know if... SpaceX's uh, Starship will be much more controllable. I know the rear fin, two of the rear fins are sort of controllable. Whether they can control them in the atmosphere, I don't know, because apparently they take a lot to be able to move around, according to Elon Musk. So we'll see. Obviously, this is just still in the preliminary design stage, as in they made a test model, so they're going to test it out and see what they can change. And, well, yeah, we'll see what happens with that. It'll be interesting to find out. Oh, and I'm using MechJeb to land, so luckily MechJeb decides to do a hover slam, I suppose you could call it. This is in real time, by the way, this last bit of the video. And yeah, this is why I decided to do this automatically, because it is so uncontrollable. I think because of the control surfaces at the front, as well as the rocket engines. Perhaps I should tone down the gimbal on the rocket engines. Just a thought. But anyway, that's my design. I hope you liked it. Uh, stick around because I'm going to be showing some of the failures. Without failures, there is no success, I think.